The first lesson is from Psalm chapter 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord that I will seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on the rock. Now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. Come. My heart says, Seek his face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger, you who have been my help. Do not cast me off. Do not forsake me, O God, my salvation. If my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Do not give me up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they are breathing on violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is from Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 through 19. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with the power through his Spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. The word of the Lord. to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers. And he said, the 
one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. So we are continuing now in this Lenten uh, season, this series on this book, 40 Days Living, the Jesus Creed. We still have a few copies, so if uh, you're uh, looking for one, you can still uh, pick one up in the office. I think we have some down in the narthex as well. So um, let's recite the Creed together, the Jesus Creed together, and it should be on the screen. All right. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other man to give you peace. All right, very good. We're getting better. I got, I got mixed up a little bit there. All right. Um, it's our goal as a church community, right? Become more loving, to grow in love. That's our, our goal. To grow a community of abnormally loving persons. And because the great ones among us are the ones who love. The great ones among us are the ones who love. Love is what makes greatness. And one problem we face um, with love is we use that word love uh, for so many different things. We say, uh, I love you. Or we say, I love my child. Or I, we say, I love my house. We say, I, I love my job. Or hopefully most of you can say that. I love my job. I love Minnesota winters. We say things like, I love ice cream. Now, what does it mean to say, I love ice cream? It doesn't mean that I will work and will for the good of ice cream, right? I mean, that doesn't make sense. I mean, I'm going to consume that ice cream. I mean, that ice cream is going to be gone when I get done with it because of my love. My love is going to take care and destroy that ice cream. So Jesus understood love to be a God-powered condition of being in which I will the good for everyone that I come into contact with. That's the definition of love. A God-powered mode of existence, a way of being, that I will will and work for the good of everybody, everybody. And this concept of love is so revolutionary that, that Jesus' followers had to find a word for it. There wasn't a word for it, so Jesus' followers had to find a word, and so they took a Greek word, and some of you know this word, agape. Agape love. And so dozens and dozens of times we find that Greek word in the Bible. Agape. Now, for Jesus, this quality of love is not a feeling. And it's not something that you should or even can turn on or turn off like a faucet depending upon who you are with. I mean, we will often say, well, it's easy for me to love this person. But then what do we say? Well, it's really challenging. It's hard for me. It's impossible for me to love him or, or her. Jesus didn't use love in that way. His notion was that we are to become loving persons. Loving persons. It is a condition of our being. So that I'm ready to will the good for any person that comes into my life because I am a loving person regardless of who that person is or how they feel about me. In fact, this agape love will express itself very differently depending on the person that I'm with. If somebody is hungry and I love them with this agape love, I will try to do what? I will, I will try to feed them, right? If somebody is lonely and I will love them with this kind of agape love, I will try to connect with them. I will, I will try to listen to them. If someone is discouraged and I love them with this agape love, I will cheer them on. I will encourage them. But let's change this just a little bit. Let's say I'm with a child, right? And let's just say that this child is my child. And let's just say that my child is a spoiled brat, okay? 
how do I show love to this child? How do I show love to this child? Discipline, right? I discipline this child. I have to discipline this child. Now, here is where love, you see, gets challenging for us. If I give food to a hungry guy, he thinks that I'm loving him. He'll, he'll be grateful and, and we'll feel close. If I give encouragement to someone who is fearful or upset, he'll think that I'm loving them and we'll feel close. If I give discipline to a spoiled brat, will they think that I'm loving them? No, they won't think that. They'll, they'll think that, you know, that I'm, I, I treat people unfairly and I'm certainly treating him unfairly. They'll, they'll think that I don't understand. They'll think that I'm playing favorites, right? In fact, in order to be a loving person, I have to be prepared to be seen as unloving. So, I will need to have a source for love that is so stable that enables me to live in a kind of risky kind of way in this life, in a, in a kind of a confrontational way in this life. I must be rooted in a source of love that is more than any other human being can give, and only God can give this kind of love. And this is why, I'm going to put this up on the screen, this is why Paul writes in Ephesians 3, I pray that according to the riches of his glory, and if you have got a Bible at home, or, you know, you might want to underline this, you might want to write this down, okay? I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being through, with the power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. Rooted in love and grounded in love. When a tree is rooted in the soil, right, it's getting what? It's getting fed, right? It's, it's getting nurtured. It's being kept alive. All the time. All the time, Paul says, all the time, I want you to be that way. Rooted in your thoughts, rooted in your mind, rooted in your feelings. All the time. Rooted in the love of God. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints, what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. That with this type of love, this agape love, the feeling of being in love can be so powerful, but actually for Jesus and for Paul, it is this agape love that has extraordinary power. In fact, Paul says love never fails. This love never fails. So think about that. Love never fails. It will always will the good. It always works and wills for the good of those that I am around no matter what. So now with this love, this agape love, God's love before us, we just live in this love, right, to grow, to be loving persons. All right, now let's go back to the Holy Scripture. How about this one? We'll put it on the screen for you. It's Paul's word in chapter 4. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths. How are you doing with that one? Let no evil talk come out of your mouths. What would it look like for you so that no evil talk would proceed from your mouth. How much would you have to cut down on the rate of your speaking to get to this no evil talk coming out of your mouth? Well, that is why love is not a feeling. It actually requires me to become a different person, right? A loving person. So let no evil come out of your mouth, but only what is useful for building up as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. Genuine love seeks to be helpful according to the other person's needs and not according to my natural preferences in life. So now think about, this is what I want you to do. I want you to think of, we're going to get real concrete about this, okay? I want you to think of some key people in your life and just bring those people 
to your mind. It might be a spouse, it might be a parent, it might be a grandparent, it might be a brother, it might be a sister, it might be a friend, it might be a child, it might be a neighbor. Love your neighbor as yourself. I want you to think of somebody in your life. And then I want you to think of this verse from Holy Scripture, and maybe you want to write this one down too. The writer of Proverbs said, and we'll put that on the screen, a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in settings of silver. How about that? A word aptly, a word fitly spoken is like gold, like silver. The right word at the right time and the right moment to the right person is just gold. It's golden. And you can remember getting a word like this from someone. I know you can. So this week, real simple, pick someone in your life, friends, a child, a spouse, maybe it's someone here, maybe it's a person sitting next to you, and pay them one compliment each day for the next seven days. That's pretty simple people, right? Loving people. One person, one compliment each day for seven days. This is our way to go across the road like the Good Samaritan did and wrap them with our bandages. This time we're using words to wrap others in bandages to help heal them and to bring oil, to pour oil over them and to give them wine. We're going to use our words this week. One compliment each day for seven days. Just like the Good Samaritan. We can all do this. And it has to be honest. It can be manipulative. You know, I mean, how many times can we say something nice to somebody because we want them to do something for us, right? It has to be honest. It has to be sincere, it has to be non-manipulative. One word, <coughs> one encouraging word, one compliment each day this week. Sometimes love can be manipulative, I mean, but we're not going to do this kind word or this encouraging word just because we want to get something out of them. We're going to do it because we're showing our love for them. So think of key people in your life. And think what is a quality or an action that they have done that you genuinely admire or that you appreciate. And then actually, you know, just tell them. Just speak it back to them. <coughs> you can start thinking about this now. And I know that I'm not very good at this, but I want to grow in becoming a more loving person. So we don't just say that, but we think of some concrete things we can do to actually help make this goal happen in our lives. You listen to God's word, and a word fitly spoken word is like apples of gold and silver. And so when I go back and when I think about things, it's just amazing how many times that I don't say that fitting word in that fitting moment. I mean, I don't do that. And it could be super simple. It could be just something like, gosh, that color looks great on you. I love that dress. I love the way you encourage our children. It's such good parenting, what you do. You thought to text this person. I would have never thought to text this person and, and let them know that you're thinking about them. I, I think that's just great that you're so thoughtful. Maybe it could be to anyone. Maybe it could be to a young couple. You know, I really admire how you are working on building your relationship, building your marriage. Maybe it's to a single mom. You know what you're doing is such great work. Such great work. I know it can't be easy, but just keep on keeping on. That, that's not hard. It's not hard to do these, these things. Thank you for your generosity in, in spirit. You know, we have people on staff at church that have such a great sense of humor. What a gift that is. To, you know, I just love to go to work and, and to laugh. And, and, and we're blessed by that. So, apples of gold and settings of silver. Apples of gold and settings of silver. And you can do that. So pick somebody. One compliment per day all week long. It has to be genuine. Maybe there is someone you need to go to this week and just say a, a humble word to. 
Maybe you said something to someone that was hurtful to them. You didn't mean it that way, but they took it as being hurtful. So maybe you need to bring a humble word to someone. Apples of gold and, and silver. Setting of silver. You know, it's interesting, and we read about that this week in our, in our book, actually. In the Gospels, the first words of love were not spoken by Jesus, but the first words of love were spoken to Jesus. After he had been baptized, a voice from heaven came to him and said, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. So Jesus is rooted in that voice, and later he went out into the wilderness and was tempted, and that is the voice that he heard. Oftentimes in the Gospels, it tells us that Jesus goes away to pray. What is the voice that he heard? That loving voice of, of God. So I want to say that the most important words this week will not be the ones that I speak, the most important words this week will not even be the ones that you speak, though you're going to speak a lot of loving words this week. The most important words that you hear this week will be exactly that, will be the ones that God speaks to you, saying to you, you are my son, you are my daughter, and I love you. I love you so much. Words matter. Words are bold. So in a few min minutes now, the service will be over, and then it will be time to practice loving, to actually practice it. Because you know, when we come to church, it's great to learn, but it's not just about learning. When we come to church, it's about worship, but it's not just about worshiping. It's about loving each other, right? Otherwise, we could just stay home, right, be by ourselves. It's about, it's about growing in love. That's why we gather together with other people. So when the service is over, take a few moments for just offering an expression of love to someone. Alright, can you do that? Right here. It'll be practice for your week. Offer an expression of love to somebody that is here. When we practice saying words of love, I'm glad you're here. You know, I'm good to see you this morning. We practice that because our goal is to grow as a community of love, to be a more loving person. So this word week, this week, speak words of love. Amen.